Okay, well, I moved there when I was seven. I'll give you a little tiny background, because we make judgments on people or whatever. And I was in one room before that in Paddington with my mother. Not one bedroom, but one room we lived in. And then she was eventually um, housed there with great excitement. It was a great, exciting time for us. And yeah, so there we moved. We were offered the White City Estate. Um, I don't know if any of you guys know that, over by Shepherd's Bush, a well-known old estate, quite a complex one with lots of different social issues um, that we turned down to, to not ready for that place. And we came here and they first offered the top floor and she said, well, no thank you, 30, then if the lift goes, my daughter's frightened. And uh, it was one bedroom, so we were lucky. They offered us the small block, sixth floor. I've given you some information there. And there we moved in. And it was really exciting for me because I had my own bedroom, big rooms, light. So that's the beginning of my story. So where do, do you want to ask where we go from there? Can, some of my memories. Can we just get that so, because we need things to go? <coughs> yeah. What year did you move in? Um, so, um, la 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 la. Bad maths. 1973, I think. Okay. 72, 73. Yeah, we've gone in, in the and, 70s. And you said that you offered somewhere else, but you wanted to come here. We, did, we didn't know about here, no, we didn't know. We didn't know where we wanted to go. But the White City Estate is a very old estate, so that would be from the 1950s. And I, I you know, so long, you, you're sort of working out my age a bit now. So <laughs> I could just remember going along open balcony, you know, all those open corridors. If you know Trellick, they're all enclosed. And loads of washing, pushing past washing, yeah. and women hanging out of their washing. So that style, that was the background. And there's still quite a lot of those on the Shepherd's Bush side or the Peabody Estates. Have you heard of Peabody mm -hmm. Estates? Yeah. Those kind of, those more things. So, yeah, and it was complex there, I think. And we were, we were frightened of the whole issue of going there, so we didn't go there. Um, and this was our second place. But I mean, we were, it was a seven year wait, housing, or probably more, seven years at least there. Because of course my mother would have asked for housing when she was bringing me up. She brought me up alone, I think I forgot to mention that. So I'm an only child, but a one parent family background, yeah. So um, yeah, and then they offered the key for there. And we went to look, and it was, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> You have lived here, and you must, well, I won't make an assumption, but indeed, what are your memories, I should ask, actually? Can you memories. tell us? Lots of different memories. Yes. I mean, uh, it was a complex community. I, um, I think there's more of a community now than there was. You just got on with your life there, and um, yeah, socially many different spheres of people I'm scared of how I'm putting this across now so um, yeah it was it was it was it was rough it was difficult now we have a concierge that helps a bit they come at a price I don't know if they're the total answer but it is very different so we had that we always had those just those three lifts but they were covered in graffiti they were always full of pee on the floor and sometimes more you know that was the norm but once you were through, through the door, it was your world and what you made of it, yeah? And the views across London, and there were people that you did interact and others, you just didn't. You just, yeah, everybody's different, so. Do you yeah. remember the first day that you moved in, at least the day, the month, what I time don't of the year actually, it was, I and don't, what memories no, you No, that I don't in. have. I just remember uh, walls, strange coloured walls. I can give you that. If you have you been inside any of the flats yet? Yeah, yeah. yeah some of you have. And so there was um, really weird. I suppose seventies colours. There was um, purples and browns and like that grey. Would, would you really like that in your house? No. So <laughs> we managed to get most of it into neutral white. I think we've got one or two rooms with wallpapers in which have changed. Just a little over the years, not much, but um, 1970s. I remember having this fabulous wallpaper that was bright orange and very, uh, you know, from somewhere really flash because a friend of my mother's and uh, you know worked in a wallpaper shop for a while. It was 
but now you just go actually it's quite fashionable down the market they've got some shops with all that sort of things and it's very retro isn't it but um, yeah they were very strange colours and this sort of linery floor that really engraves and browns so we eventually got carpet and things for that but um, yeah you know all the rooms were huge you could get a kitchen table just a bit smaller than this in the kitchen and still have a little party and everything round and and there was, uh, there's a large balcony, all of them come with balconies. And in the kitchen, I think all of them had these state, they're called stable doors, which I'd never heard of before I moved in. I could always, my mum was always telling everybody, oh, we've got stable doors, which are like stable doors. So you can just have the top half open and, or the bottom half. You never really want the bottom half, but you don't have to have the whole, whole thing open. It's very strange, I suppose, for cats or children or whatever. It's just a nice sort of feeling so that they were they were lovely luxuries and then in the living room huge sliding doors out onto the balcony and you see there's a lot of glass there I mean now they build with lots of glass didn't they and it's you know a sign of luxury but yeah that was amazing to have those and open then double aspect which is a, a quite a new word for for me <laughs> which means that you you know a lot of new housing I think these are are, are not double aspect so you either have a flat facing that way, or you have a flip facing that, but you don't see both. You know, like the houses there, they go, and so in the summer you can open the windows and you just get the air through. I don't know if you live in flats or, or houses. Do you live in flats or houses? Yeah. So <coughs> it's really nice to, if you get depressed from one room and light, you can run to the <laughs> other side of the house and get the energy or light from there, or hear the police cars, or what's... <laughs> I'm here, you see, not to a share of stuff here. Yeah, so that's that. Wafting, I'm wafting, sorry. Something. Um, you moving you move into quite a big house at seven years old, a big like, flat basically. Um, can you tell us about your first impression of your neighbours? Neighbours, yeah. I, um, I do remember the first neighbours. Um, they were, uh, Trellick is really weird. I should bring that in quickly. But, um, I'm giving it away, we're at the second flat along. So the first flat is a, is a down. There's a, a pattern to uh, the trellis. So there's a down one, first floor. The next one goes up, but it becomes the first flat. So we're the end flat. So we've got no, only neighbours on one side. And then the next one along is a straight in. It's a, for an older person, it's a one bedroom. So you go in at corridor level. And the one after that's the flashy one called the masonette. So you go in that corridor level, and I think you go down, and then you go up again. So my next door toilet neighbour and bathroom neighbour is about three flats along. So that's quite... But back to my neighbours then, I did get to know both sides of our flat originally, and um, one of them disappeared overnight. My mum was quite friendly with them, and they used to come in and have tea, and then they suddenly did what's called a bunk in those days, so they... they, they disappeared, they obviously didn't pay rent or something, they did a moonlight flit it was called in those days and they were gone, which was quite sad because they were nice. Mm -hmm. And then next door neighbours were a very old couple and they were really sweet and they were like my second grandparents and I can remember having seaside trips with them once or twice in a big old Ford car or something, but they didn't, they didn't stay very long. And then after that we didn't really get to know the neighbours. There were very different types of people living there with their own issues. Um, and you try, but our lives were also very busy, partly escaping probably from what we had there, because it was quite lonely. And it's redeveloped now because I'm back home, and there's quite a lot of people from my childhood there. And I was known as the posh one, I suppose. <gasps> I meant to turn that off. Uh oh. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> well, something's happened there, they've gone themselves. They probably realise something. And um, yeah, so I, uh, you know, and I, I had a, a, a background which is quite unusual, you might say, for this, this area. I don't think it is, but I, I went into ballet and did this kind of arts. And um, even though I was in the tower block and this kind of thing. So yeah, there was not really a, co a con connection, you know, I was they were writing their graffiti and I wasn't and this kind of thing and it was sort of looks and you just went about your business, you went about your business. 
Um, but that's not now. I know a lot, a lot of them now. And we talk about our childhood. And they're going through their issues now with their elderly parents. And a lot of them really stayed on in the block there. You know, It was sort of very, very um, uh, sort of complicated family, which was our toilet neighbours. And we, they heard all our goings on which weren't that much in the old days, but they, they aren't now, because I have a mother who's not so well. But they had a lot of issues, and you'd hear it through the door, shouting and arguments, and um, police were called and different things. But I met them recently. I mean, I've actually met them, and their parents was very, very ill, in a wheelchair. And, you know, we made jokes and laughs about our, our lives, and people come back together, and their stories were ultimately the same. You know, whatever your social background and my, my social background I'm, I'm, I'm making any sense as the same when yeah. I'm tower built but you might not think that am I allowed to say that about do you have a judgement about me people here or not no good because people do judge don't they I do I do you, were you on, on initial looking or something and the other chap was talking about graffiti I don't understand it I see. Was he talking about the gardens mm, out there? Yes. Yeah. They're, I think they're making housing and all sorts. I don't know what's going to happen. I remember that as really flash car park, which never got used because everybody was too nervous to use it, I think, and all sorts of things went on there. And then there was all these gardens. And then they slowly got ripped apart and they built a bit of a football pitch. And then the graffiti artists took over there. And I'm too busy dashing, I suppose, but I've taken in some of the graffiti and um, I've actually just got a book recently on cat graffiti. But uh, I don't get a lot of it. But I, I just saw a piece recently. I absolutely adore. But there's somebody who did another graffiti. And that's what they do. And I, Perhaps you lot can tell me about that. But I didn't get it. I thought, well, I can't stay there just two days. So I, I can take it in. You know, it had buildings in it and animals. But most of the time it's names or, or looks like names to me. But they, they, they have to put another name, I suppose, because they're making their mark. It's their expression. Is that right? Have I got that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're all younger than me. You can teach me all of this. Yeah. So, but... Um, so. so it seems like you've seen a lot of change over the years. You said that it was like a flashy car park and then... like a Yeah. Thing. Well, when I say flashy, I mean, it, a Goldfinger had designed, I think, all those incredible attention... Um, 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 I've not got that... Um, attention to detail he he had tried to do his best i think i don't think the building materials were particularly brilliant that they used and they threw it up and i won't go into all the politics of all of that but i believe in those kind of housing i won't say it's bad housing we should all live in this um i've worked at an art gallery i was telling thing where that we've done lectures on goldfinger and i've stood up and said no this isn't a bad way to live i don't know how you feel about that in tower blocks Perhaps I'm not allowed to ask you questions on that, and I'd like to. But, yeah, I, d I think you, we can live very comfortably, but it's um, w how we decide to live with them, uh, you know, and that is about communicating and socialising in lifts. I find even now, you know, I'll sometimes I'll make an effort and say, but a lot of times you get in and you feel frightened or, of, you know, Will you fart? Will you... Will you, will you, will you uh, is there going to be a strange smell from all the rubbish that's being... T taken up and down now it was, was never an intention of Goldfinger, but that's how it's done. Or uh, will the people be a bit aggressive, or, or you know, or being having a cigarette in there, or, or something? And you know, it's it's lovely when people say good morning or something, but it's, you know, it's not always that. How do you feel so, about how the the local area has changed? Um, yeah, it's changing, isn't it? I can say that. I I just sort of. And I'm sort of muttered about it the other day and a part of me really likes it because I'm quite complicated in my likes and dislikes because I do come from a tower block and one parent family but I also love really beautiful things having looked at ballet and opera houses right at the top mainly standing so a part of me quite likes all these new cafes and things and everybody posing outside but another <laughs> part is really upset oh yeah the other day outside Trellick I was swearing away because there's a new cafe along from, you know, the little um, Arabic-style, Islamic, I call it cafe, but it's not really so. But they're all socially, they're all men in there, and that irritates me a bit, I think. I want, because originally that was a, a shop run by an Indian family who lived in the block, 
and so everybody was in and out and then they were getting their stuff because there was a post office at the back and everybody you know were getting their benefits or their letters coming and all it was all happening and curries and things and then it moved and it's really just gentlemen in there or men and that's you know that's all oh, well, let's get a group of women and go and sit in there and have coffee <laughs> especially I, I, you know um, what if we just have I want <laughs> Eid is when it's finished what have we just had um, the Arab Ramadan. Ramadan yeah they were out till very late and that was irritating but these are all little different social differences but n- uh, further along they've opened a new well it was in with Trellick Lounge or something they do furniture but that's very expensive I'm looking I went in there I said excuse me how much is a cup of tea and she said £2.30 or something oh no, I didn't I didn't want that I didn't you know I thought I couldn't work that out socially. A part of me wants, come on, let's get a nice cup of tea in a nice place for 90p. And I'm still made a profit. 